Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in them. In the in it. <laughs> oh, we praise God for just another day. We thank God for his mercy and for his love and kindness. Those that are watching online, welcome to Rebirth Ministries. And we thank God for you tuning in. Go ahead and hit that share and like button and hit that comment section with your amens, with your hallelujahs, with your emojis, because we are here to have church and if you have any special prayer requests go ahead and put it in that comment section and pastor and i and the rebirth ministry family will be sure to pray both with and for you and if the lord has already answered your prayer go ahead and put that in the comment section as well so we can share it with the rebirth ministry family and those that are watching online for truly you know god is a prayer answering god he is alive and well, let's all stand this afternoon. We're going to give God a praise and a worship on today. You know, let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let your praise rise on today. So you know the routine online. Move that coffee table out of the way. Go ahead and push that nice stand to the left or to the right. And let's have church on this afternoon. For truly, he is worthy to be praised. And we thank God on today. Truly, we can't thank him enough. And we're going to go ahead and sing along with us and put the hands together as we sing this song, as we praise him.
And we're going to have a moment of silence. It's the Memorial Day season. And that season, you know, I had it mixed up. I was thinking uh, for the veterans that were alive, but this is to honor all veterans who have gave the ultimate price. They sacrificed their life for this great nation. And they're the reason why we're able to come to the house of the Lord. Not in quick, we don't have to hide. We don't have to hide our Bibles. We don't have to be ashamed. For truly, the nation is one nation under God. And we praise God for this nation. You may not agree with what's going on all of the time, but this is the, I wouldn't want to live anywhere else but in the United States of America. They got their problems like everybody else, but I thank God I would trade to live anywhere else but here. We have freedom, and the sun has set free. You are free indeed, and that's just this weekend. I know we're going to get together with family and friends and cookouts and fellowships, but let's just remember and thank God. Thank that veteran. If the, the veteran's alive or deceased, thank him personally. Thank him or her for their sacrifice. And my husband, he served in the military, and we thank you, Elder Patton, for serving our country because, because of this man serving our nation. We have to have our children and we have today. We honor you all today. And we're going to ask you to please remain standing as our pastor comes.
right? All right. We're going to go into prayer. Um, continue to pray for me that God will have this way. And I'm not going to be able to say anything else after this because they say I'm done after this. So, uh, they might let me lift the offer and that be it. And they said I can't even introduce my sister. They don't even do it. So. But we are grateful. I want to say we are so grateful to her for being here. She has been our, our friend for those years, and we're excited about what God is doing in her life. And uh, the author, the uh, podcast, and all. So she's just a busy woman. And that's, that's, that's the way you got to be. You got to be busy for the Lord. So we do thank God for her uh, uh, being here on today. And then on next, it's next week, Pentecost Sunday. Yes. Amen. Pentecost Sunday. Amen. And, uh, this will be our last guest speaker until Bishop Johnson get here. Amen. And I talked to Bishop Johnson on yesterday, and they are flying in from Biloxi, Mississippi. Amen. And they're going to be here with us, and I'm looking forward to that. Uh, but we got a good speaker for you on the next week, and that's in the person of Evangelist Patrice Haywood. <laughs> and I told you last week that uh, I was even doing it before I got in this position. And I was like, there's a lot of evangelists, there's a lot of women doing a lot of things. And I was talking to Bishop Johnson, and he got three churches. And he can't get the men to step up. And, and I'm having the same problem. You all know I've been going to the prisons for 20 years. I know all kind of men that's out on the streets. They got to deliver them from the jail. But it's hard to do this step up. And so you can't stop. And so you have women that say, I'll go, send me. Hallelujah. So that's where I'm at. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God is doing a great thing. I was listening to this lady this morning, very elegant, very graceful, Dr. Cynthia Jane. And she really touched me. She really touched me. So ladies, thank God for you. All right. Let him use you. All right. All right. Pray.
you for your grace. We thank you for all that you have done. We thank you, Lord, for we feel your Holy Ghost power on this morning. We bind the enemy on every hand. Throw down the that you were blessed on the day we ask that you would touch Raymond Brown in Atlanta, Lord. Touch his body. Bless him, God, and heal his body in Jesus' name. Tell Sister Lee and her family right now. Comfort them, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, be there for them in Bitten Harbor. And God, we ask that you will continue to move on us. Bless us. Oh, God, we pray for quail this morning, God. Hallelujah. Stir her up in the name of Jesus. Oh, bless Tracy on today. Stir her up. Stir up her pure mind, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, say it's getting hot. It's going to be a hot summer, Lord. It's going to be a rocky summer. Our perilous times are going to continue to come. But God, we ask that you would cover us with your blood right now. Bless this church, bless this ministry, add to it daily, such as simply saying, help us, God. Help us, God, as we embark on the month of June, we begin to fast from social media. God, we ask you to strengthen us, God. Strengthen us on the side. In the name of Jesus, have your way, God. Oh, God, right now, we believe you. We know that you're able to do all things, God. Holiness or hell, God. Hallelujah, help us be holy. Holy, not just on the outside, but Lord, search our hearts. Help us to be holy on the inside. Hallelujah. Bless us right now. Swim in the Messiah. In Jesus' name. I pray that the Holy Ghost fall in his face. Only children right now. Send a word from heaven. Touch the speaker. In Jesus' name. Right now, right now. Right now.
bag. But uh, if you go to Mexico, just across the border here, if your family don't bring you nothing to eat, guess what? You know what I mean? You know, it's up to the family to take care of you while you're there. And so if your family mad at you, you're in trouble. So they don't spend no money on your uniforms. They don't spend no money on no plumbing. They don't spend no money on none of that. The, 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 the conditions are deplorable. So this is a great country, even though we got some great problems. Hallelujah. My advice is keep on praying. The Lord is not. All right? So we're going to take a just a few seconds uh, and a silence. If we can get Alana to agree with us, we're going to take a few seconds and we're going to honor those that have given their life.
a point, but you ain't gonna let no hands. They ain't ready to go. 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 Chris Brown or Bruno Mars or somebody like that. I got up here talking about, you know, uh, what he say? That song that Beachy was singing to me. And now you like, you know, that's, you remember, why that's why I like it. Uh, some, you know, you all have got to make the change from from R and B to holiness. That's right. That's right. All right. You got to clap. It's just clap. Can you dance, twin? <laughs> Sit on up. Sit on. We're gonna we're gonna practice some clapping here. Come on. Sit on up. Get on up. I'm whispering all the way to Zaire. She can't. She don't hear me. Sit on up, Zaire. Zaire. Sit on up. Sit on up. Sit on up. You all can clap your hands, and I want you to praise the Lord, all right? All right? Are you listening to me? I want you to clap your hands. Now, you want to go fast or you want to go slow? What you want to do? Because you know I can do it all.
I told them that I will pay you. But what you got to do, you got to be here every Sunday in the month of June. That's right, that's right. All of you. And all that to go. And the person that brings the most visitors wins. So far, the is in the lead. All right. All right, so. Oh, Ava, oh, we better write this down. All right. All right. And then you adults, I want you to bring visitors as well. Bring your visitors as well. And individuals that you see that are not here, I want you to call them and remind them we are still having church. That's right. That's All right. right. All right. Just before she turned me, off here, I want to make a plea to Facebook land. Hallelujah. There should be a cash app in front of you. And I want you to use that cash app on today. Now, I got into the cousin chat room one the other day. That was my nieces and nephew chat room. I, I got in there and I asked for an offering and nobody responded. The only person who responded was, was uh, Amanda. Everybody else acted like I didn't say nothing. But that's okay, because I'm going to give them a personal call. All right. All right. And, and, and let them know, okay, God is blessed. That's why Amanda got a job. That's why she's being blessed, because she, she gives. And we want to encourage you all to get. Now, we got a guest speaker today, and we got some people missing. But we got a guest speaker today. And we got uh, we got to make sure that they get back home. They need some gas. They got to go back home, and we want to bless them as well. So we need a good offering on today. All right, we need a good offering on today, uh, so we can bless the people of oh God. All right, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right, and so use the cash app. Use that cash app. Those that are watching by Facebook. Hallelujah, you said cash out. All right, you that are here, we do need you to uh, bless us. We need you, I was discussing with my wife about me and her offering, uh, increasing our giving, because um, we want to eventually get our own building. But we can't do it with $100 offerings. You see what I'm saying? We have got to increase our giving so that uh, we can bless the church, and then we have our own.
Amen. We thank God for that beautiful, beautiful song. Amen. I give the most esteemed honor to introduce our speaker for today. I thank God for this dear sister. She is truly a sister in the Lord. Amen. You know, I thank God for her. I've been following her online. And I just thank God and I've seen how God has truly ordered her steps and how she stepped out on that faith. And so through online, I don't care what God has asked you to do, do it with all your heart. Don't be afraid to step out. Because man will talk you out of it. You'll find every excuse and every reason on why you shouldn't do what God is calling you to do. And I thank God for her on today. You know, I, I was teasing her before service. You know, she has my maiden name, Jones. You know, and I thank God. It's always a Jones thing. You know, and I thank God for her. She is truly a missionary, an entrepreneur, an author, all wrapped up in one. I want everybody to stand real quick and get, put your hands together for our speaker of the hour, none other than Sister Gianna Wright Jones. Come on, we ready. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continuously be in my mouth. I said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continuously be in my mouth. And I have to give thanks with thanksgiving and to his voice and praise. And love his name. For the Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. you to repeat after me. And this is the verse that I want you to take 
dear at heart, you may have heard it, but I want you to memorize it, because I teach my youth over at New Creationist. I can do all things. Let's go. I can do all things. Through Christ that strengthens me. One more time. I can do all things. Through Christ that strengthens me. Philippians 4 and 13. Now, if you was a little smart, you would have wrote that down because you know what? I'm going to have pastor test y'all on this. And he said that on um, June, y'all going to go to see the point, right? So, I'm going to have pastor add this to the list. Not only do they have to worship in service, that one that you're going to pay the $50 for, whoever can memorize this scripture and bring it back to pastor in the month of June, he's going to take care of you. So, that's added to me. Is that okay, Pastor? Okay. That's okay, all right. So Philippians 4 and 13. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. No matter where you go in life, no matter what battles, no matter what you face at school, know that you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. No matter how hard the schoolwork may be, no matter how the bully may be targeting you, no, you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Our theme for today is stepping into your purpose. And I'm going to give you a quick testimony. In 2018, I began to pray and ask God. I've been in church all my life. And I've done mostly everything you can do in the church to self preach the word of God. So I was the usher, I was the nurse. I did the bulletins, I sung on a praise team, I sung in the choir. I even became an armor bearer, an intercessor. I did it all, but still preach the word of God. I even taught the children as well. But in 2018, I began to feel something that the Lord was shifting something in my life. And so I began to ask God, I said, I'm going to turn 40 in 2019. I said, God, I don't want to just turn 40 and don't have nothing to reflect on all these, all these years. Lord, you blessed me with so many gifts and talents. And I want to be able to give those back. And so the Lord blessed me to write my first book in right. 2019, right. Walking in God's Destiny. Not only did he stop there, I began to author five other books and been a part of at least 12 anthology projects. So the Lord will bless you. But you know what I had to do? You know the scripture that I taught you today? I had to tell myself that. Because as I began to write, I didn't know any writers. I didn't know any authors at the time. I wasn't even on Facebook at that time. So I didn't know that there was a whole community of people out there that wrote. I didn't know that there was a whole community of authors. But I began to pray and say, Lord, teach me. And I tell you, the Lord taught me. He said, Google it. Self-published author. And I did just that. And I became a self-published author. All right. So what I want to tell you today, you, that there's nothing impossible that you cannot do. If you want to be a lawyer, a doctor, Whatever you want to be is possible. And I'm going to give you some nuggets on today how you can succeed. I'm going to teach you a Bible study today too. Perhaps some of y'all may have heard of Esther. If not, you're going to learn today. So our theme is stepping into your purpose. And the scripture that I'm going to go to is Esther 4 and 14. For if you remain silent at this time, refuge and deliverance for the Jew will arise from another place. But you and your fathers will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. I want to let you know today, you, that God has a plan for each and every one of you. How many know that God has called you 
for a purpose. You are here today. You are in good ground. You are in a safe environment today because you're in the house of the Lord. Stepping into your purpose requires you to plan, act, and fulfill your destiny. We're going to talk a little bit about Esther and how her purpose unfolded. Now, Esther, she didn't have a grand life. Like maybe some of you may not. You may have come from the ghetto or come from the projects or, you know, other parts of the city that may not have been as rich as other parts of the city. Guess what? Esther did too. Esther didn't have a mother or a father. So if you got one, be blessed on today. And if you don't, be blessed for those that are caring for you. We know Esther as an orphanage girl who her cousin Malachi had adopted. He had learned that the king was seeking out a new wife as his former wife disobeyed his commands when he asked her to come. How many know that when we disobey our parents, we disobey our teachers, we disobey those that have ruler over us, we miss out on our blessings. How many of you have gotten in trouble at school and maybe y'all had a field trip planned and you really wanted to go on that field trip, but you end up getting in trouble just before y'all was going to go on a field trip, right? It didn't feel good, did it? When you wasn't able to go like the other kids did. And so that was like the queen, at the time, she disobeyed what her husband asked her when he said come. Esther goes through a period of purification of 12 months of pampering and treatment to enhance her beauty before she could go before the king again. How many of you know when you have a calling upon your life, you must go through a time of purification and a time to study the word of God to fulfill your purpose. So guess what? You need to be in Sunday school class. You need to be part of a youth ministry because in those times, you're going to learn the word of God. You're going to learn how to conduct yourself and you're going to learn how to fulfill your purpose. That's why those things are necessary in the church. And that's why we need you youth to be here. God has called all of you. He has given every one of you a purpose. Perhaps some of you can sing, some of you can dance, some of you may be able to draw. Whatever it is, and some may even be an elegant speaker. Like we have Brother Haywood here who can play the organ. He's using his purpose. He is being an example to each and every one of you that you too can do the same. Whatever it is that God called you to do. God, Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declare the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. That's what God wants. He wants a hope and a future for each and every one of you. You don't have to be a drug dealer. You don't have to walk the streets. You don't even have to do what your friends are doing if it's not good. You can be your own example. You can be your own leader. God had a plan for Esther. As we see in Esther 2 and 15, he had allowed one of the king's men who was in charge of the women to advise Esther. And she asked for nothing but what he suggested. He was her coach. How many know that it's good to have a coach? It's good to have a mentor. It's good to have that big brother or big sister or someone that can encourage you, that can lead and direct you in this life. And I even have a coach. And I have a mentor as well to help me fulfill my purpose. Because sometimes a coach and a mentor can see that gift and that ability in you and they will pull it out of you. And you will be able to fulfill your purpose. I encourage you to get a coach or a mentor to help you fulfill your purpose. And perhaps your mentor at this time, a coach, is a counselor at school. That's someone that's going to advise you what 
you should, the classes you should take, classes that are going to help you to become what it is that you desire. That's right. So we can look at that person as being our coach. I encourage you to reach out to them. Or perhaps it's a teacher that shows a lot of interest in you, a lot of teacher that has favor with you. Hook up with that teacher because I remember when I was in high school, I had a teacher that saw something in me. And that teacher allowed me to get a job. In the ninth grade, I was working at the Flint Public Library. And throughout high school, I kept a job. I even worked for Channel 12 News one time in high school. I also wrote for the Flint Journal newspaper when we had that. So it's good to be encouraged and reach out to those teachers and be a person that somebody wants to work with. Okay? That's the most important thing. Because in our generation nowadays, we have so many children that disrespectful, so many children that don't want to do what their elders are instructing them to do. Don't be like that. Because when you do, you lose out, like the queen did. Amen. Esther was admired by everyone who saw her. Verse 16 says she was taken to see the king in a royal palace in the 10th month. Now the king was attracted to Esther more than any of the other women, and she won favor and approval more than any of the other young women. So I want to give you an example of that. She was kind of like in a beauty passion, if I can make it into terms where you all will understand. And so she was up with the other girls, getting dressed and getting ready to be judged upon, as we can say. And in her being judged upon, she had a coach. Remember I said that? She had somebody that was on the inside that knew what the king liked, right? So he began to instruct her how to get ready for this beauty passion that she was going to be a part of. And when God has appointed and anointed you for a purpose, you will be attracted to what God has purposed right. you to do. Right. You will receive invites to come and preach, teach, motivate, and fulfill the call that is upon your life. As you walk in purpose, God will open doors for you. Remember I said in 2018, God began to open doors for me. He began to allow me to write. Not only write, but be able to become an author. Not only did I become an author, I became a motivational speaker. Then the Lord called me into the ministry to preach. And as time goes on, God allowed me to be on the radio for a short period of time and to motivate people there. And now God has called me back to you all, the youth. Amen. So I am fulfilling my purpose. Esther was appointed as the new queen. So guess what? She won the beauty passion. She became the new queen. How many know God will give you the favor to fulfill his purpose? He will walk beside you every step of the way. He is ordering your steps. For the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. That's right, that's right. Esther was on her way of fulfilling her calling. Now don't think for a minute that everything is going to be perfect. And don't think for a minute that there's not going to be any trouble along the way. Because whenever you're doing a purpose for God, you better know that there's going to be some trouble along the way. We know that the devil is like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, 1 Peter 5 and 8. And just as Esther is settling into being a new queen, the enemy comes up with the plan. Listen now. But how many know God always knows the devil's plan? He already has the master plan to counteract his plan. How many know that the summer is coming up? And school's going to be coming out for summer, right? And, um, you know, the devil, he's already seeking out who he's going to destroy. And this is the time that you need to draw closer to your family, draw closer to your parents, really be obedient, because those streets out there ain't no joke, okay? 
And I was just telling my daughter that the other day. You don't want to be found out there. Because guess what? I told her mama can't help you. And Pastor Patton can tell you from experience because he goes to the prison. I don't go to the prison, but he's there. And he knows the decisions that those men and women make in the prison. And you don't want to be out there doing the wrong thing because you linked up with one of your friends and they said, hey, let's go sell some drugs. No, 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 no. You don't want to do that because guess what? You can get a job at 14. If you're 14 years old and you want a job, I just scroll Facebook all day long. And there's Flint Stride is hiring. And the other team, Quest, is hiring. So there's no reason for anyone to be out selling drugs or stealing or doing any of those things. I teach my youth that where I serve. You don't want to be found doing the wrong thing because guess what? Mother, daddy, pastor can't help you. When you go before that judge, you gonna have mercy upon whatever he says. That's right. What he says is what goes. But how many know that we gonna be some good you family? Right. We gonna be some good pastor you up in here, right? right. We gonna find something that we can do this summer that is gonna be helpful, right? If we don't get no job, guess what? We can get a nine month. I see some young men right here that's old enough to to customize, right? Amen. For some money, right? Amen. 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 And even I'm not just telling you nothing that I don't know. My daughter at 12 years old is an author. I didn't bring her book today and I would I wish I would have knew a lot of you were gonna be here. I would have brought her and her book to let you know that she is an author. At the age of, I wanna say 10 or 11, she became an author. She's working on her second project that will be coming out at the end of the month. So I'm here to tell you that you have purpose. Yes, right, that's right. So let's get back to our story here. So now, Mordecai had overheard the plans to kill the king. Verses two and 21 through 27. We find Malachi sitting at the king's gate when he overheard a plot to kill the king. He told Queen Esther, who reported it to the king and gave credit to Mordecai. Acts of royalty at that time were known to be given immediately. They didn't normally wait to give you back what you did. He went and told the king, hey, there's a plot against your life. We know that they're setting up to kill you. And normally the king will bring him in and honor him and give him whatever he wanted at that time. But how many know that sometimes you may not be rewarded for your good at that time? But no, God has not forgotten you. He's just waiting. And we're going to see what happens on in the story. So, as the story goes on, how many know it's all in God's time? God knows you, and he knows what you need. So again, we see the enemy drafting another plan. You know, the enemy, he's not going to give up. And I'm sure some of y'all have some bullies in your class, or you have seen some in the class, and they just don't give up, do they? Sometimes they'll keep pushing your button, and keep pushing your button, and keep pushing it, to you just react, right? And so that's how the enemy is. He's not going to give up. He's going to keep pushing those buttons. He's going to keep saying, come on, hang out with me tonight. Hey, let's play um, Fortnite. Hey, let's do this, let's do that. Oh, I know all about it. I told you I have a teenage daughter. I know what's out there. Amen. He's going to say, it's no problem with listening to that rap music. Mama don't know I'm listening to it. That TikTok, oh, I know all about I'm coming down your lane with TikTok. All day long, scrolling that tab, looking at TikTok. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some good things on TikTok. And there's also not some good things on there, right? And we have the age to know right from wrong, right? Amen. So, 
as we go on, the enemy drafts another plan to kill all the Jews this time, including Mordecai. Due to Mordecai refusing to bow to Haman and honor him. Esther 5 and 9 says, when you have been assigned for a plan, the enemy will try and stop you from fulfilling your purpose. Even if it means killing you naturally or spiritually. The role Esther and her cousin Mordecai was assigned to was a specific shift in the destiny of a nation. Don't you know your purpose isn't just for you? I couldn't keep my story. I couldn't keep the things that I went through in life to myself. But I had to write this book so that somebody else could pick it up one day and be encouraged. And guess what? Each and every one of you, your story is being written. That's right. That's right. Those tests and testimonies that you hear the older saints say sometimes, those are stories. The role of Esther and her cousin Mordecai would change the nation. What purpose have God given you? So let's continue to read on and find out what happens in our story. So as Mordecai remained positioned at the king's gate, he uncovered the strategies of the enemy. Esther would listen to Mordecai, and she was the inside voice in the kingdom. Sometimes it's good to have a team, someone you can work with to fulfill your purpose that you are assigned to. Every person will have a task to fulfill. Isn't that like sometimes at school, the teacher will say, okay, we're gonna have a project today and we're gonna do a board and I want two or three of you all to work together, right? So you gotta work with your team, y'all gotta come up with the theme, y'all might have to do a PowerPoint presentation now because I think they're getting away from the little easy boards now. Everything electronic. So you might have to do a PowerPoint presentation, right? But everybody has to work together. And sometimes it's not easy to work with people when you agree, but you have to learn how, because that's the only way you're gonna survive in this world is to work with other people, right? So when you all begin to work on that PowerPoint presentation, right? And one person might pick out this, and another person might pick that out, and you bring it together, right? And guess what? At the end, you have fulfilled the assignment, right? So we're going to say that assignment was your purpose for that week, right? And so you fulfilled it. And guess what? You and your group may have gotten an A on that assignment. It didn't just go to Johnny and Sue, but it went to everybody that worked on that project, right? So that's how God is. God not only just blesses me, he'll bless you, you, and you. He'll bless us all at the same time. That's the kind of God that we serve. And so in our story, as it goes on, they had, the enemy had drawn up a plan to kill the Jews, including Mordecai. Now one thing that Queen Esther withheld Early on in the story, her cousin told her not to reveal who she was. And she may not understood right then and there why he did not want her to reveal who she was. But it was for protection. And so many times, we have to sometimes guard our anointing. Sometimes we have to protect that gift that is within us until it is a time and a season for it to fulfill. God may tell you, Kiana, I want you to preach the word of God, but it may not be in my season just yet to preach the word of God. Guess what? I might have to keep that to myself because if I begin to tell too many people, God called me to the ministry, they gonna come up with all kinds of reasons and why and you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, and, and it may discourage me, right? Or it may even save my life. In this instance, because she withhold that she was a Jew, it saved her life. And she was able to be part of that beauty passion. If she would have told them beforehand she was a Jew, she would never have been chosen. So sometimes we gotta keep those things to 
ourselves until it's time to let everyone know what God is going to do. So as the story goes on, I'm trying to wrap it up here. The king, so Esther, she listened to what Mordecai had told her. Amen. Mordecai told her the plot, that there was a plot out to kill all the Jews. When out of fear, Esther declined his request. Now Esther had hidden from the king that she was a Jew. What is she going to do? Now she in a, in a situation. Because now she's somebody that she's not. She's somebody that he thought that she was or was not, right? Amen. So now she like, do I tell him I'm the Jew and see what's going to happen? Am I going to lose my position? Am I going to lose my wealth? Am I going to lose my prestige? Am I going to lose all those things now if I reveal who I am? But how many know God always has a plan? Know that God will always have your back. Whenever he designed the plan. Now, make that clear that you hear that. Now, when God gives you the plan, he will have your back. Now, when you come up with the plan, you on your own. Now, his grace and mercy is sufficient. I know that. But it's better to go with God's plan. So, as we go on, once Esther decided, okay, I got to go into the king and I got to tell him this plan that has come up upon all the Jews. She said, what can I do? So she began to think about fasting and praying. How many have heard their parents talk about fasting and praying? How many have seen their mothers in the midnight hour on the side? or perhaps have prayed for you on the way to school. And you see your mom say, oh, I'm not going to eat today. I'm gonna, you go ahead and eat. You may not have understood why mama not eating, but she said, y'all, come on. Come on around the table. Mama ain't going to eat today. I might just drink me a little glass of water, but I'm not going to eat today. Because she knows that through prayer and fasting, that gets the attention of God. If you want to get the attention of God, I guarantee if you pray and fast, heaven will be open unto you. Whatever your request is, God will honor it. And so she remembered that. And so she said, me and the other girls, we are going to fast and pray. And Mordecai, you do the same. I want you to go back and tell your posse, we going to do the same. I want you to go back and tell your gang members, we're going to do the same. We're going to fast and we're going to pray. And we're going to ask God to work this thing out. And as they begin to fast and pray, and I'm going to hurry on up the message here, God worked a miracle for them. God gave Esther favor one more time with the king. Because whenever you go before the king, you got to ask for permission. You can't just freely come before the king. Okay? But we serve the king. The king of kings. The lord of lords. And we don't need no permission to go to him. Hallelujah. How many know we can go to him in the midnight hour? We can go to him early in the morning. And he is God. He is God all by himself. He don't need our help. Hallelujah. And so as the Queen Esther went before the king. He gave her the okay. He put out his scepter unto her, which means that it was okay for you to come. So when she came before the king, she told the king what the plan of the enemy was and what they were going to do with the Jews. And how many know that God worked it out as the purpose was to be in the kingdom for such a time as that. Her purpose was to save her people. And she did just that. How many of you are willing to do what God has called for you to do? How many of you are willing to fulfill his purpose? Maybe your purpose is in your household is to 
go to school every day. Maybe your mom said, look, I need you to go to school. I want you to get good grades. I want you to do your best. I want you to be a leader. Guess what? That's your purpose right now in life. It's to fulfill the education, to fulfill getting your degree and getting your high school diploma. That's your purpose. See, we don't want to dream so far ahead. So many times we ask kids, well, what do you want to be? No, let's focus on right now. Let's focus on getting you through ninth through 12th grade. Let's focus on to getting you to school every day. How many know that we heard about the mass shooting of the kids, right? So our purpose as parents is to pray and ask God to protect you as you go out the door. And guess what? Your purpose is to be that present boy and girl that your parents have made you to be. And so as the story goes on, Esther fulfilled her purpose. I'm going to give you three points on how you can fulfill your purpose. Number one, God has the purpose and plan for your life. You're not too young to pray. I just taught my youth on last week how to put a prayer together. What we did was we took a piece of paper, I showed them a video first on how, what prayer was and how we could start a prayer. We started out with a piece of paper like this, and I went through each and every one, and I said, give me a line to start off with. And some said, Heavenly Father. I said, okay, let's put Heavenly Father down. Everybody had to write down Heavenly Father. I said, what else we gonna say? Somebody said, he is the Lord of Lords. I said, all right now, so we got Heavenly Father, he is the Lord of Lords. I said, okay, so now we're going to begin to ask God what it is that we need. So we begin to discuss what our needs were. And so I was trying to get where my youth was, so I don't want to give them the answer, or I wanted to see what they were going to say, right? So I said, what is it that we would need? And somebody said, a house. I said, oh, yeah, we need a house. I said, okay, so we're going to ask God to provide us with a home. Everybody wrote that on their papers. Then I went to the next student and I said, what else do we need? And somebody else said, we need transportation. I said, yep, we need transportation. So we began to write that. And what was I teaching them? I was teaching them how to write a prayer. So many times, you don't have to always verbally say your prayer. You can write your prayer. At your age, you can write what it is that you want God to do. So then I stayed on their level, okay? And so I said, well, now we're going to ask God for our wants. So I began to ask him, what do we want? So one boy came back and said, I want a pair of Jordans. I said, okay, well, we're going to write down, I want a pair of Jordans. All right? So then I said, what else do we want? And another person came back and said, I want a Nike sweatsuit. I said, all right, well, we're going to write down, I want a Nike sweatsuit. I said, okay, well, we got a pretty good prayer going on now. So I said, we all going to repeat it. So we all repeated it together, right? And then I said, something is missing. How are we going to end our prayer? Right. So one boy said, amen. He said, real quick. He said, we're going to say amen. I said, okay, well, let's put down amen. I said, now, that's a formal prayer. We have asked God for what we wanted, we have asked him for our needs, our wants, we've given him reference, and we gave him reference at the end. And I said, as time goes on, we'll develop that prayer a little bit more. But when you're working with you, you can't expect them to pray, pray like you pray. Right. You know what I'm saying? You have to teach them where they are. So I begin to teach them where they are. And guess what? When I see them again on next week, I'm going to ask them, and we're going to go through it again, how to write a prayer. You may be asking, Sister Kiana, why are you doing that? Because you can't do nothing without prayer. How many know that you have to pray in season and out of season? The word of God says pray without season. And so you can't do anything in this life without acknowledging our Heavenly Father. He is the one that gives you the strength. Remember I told you in Philippians 4 and 13, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Number two, you must be willing to activate your purpose. You have to fulfill it. You must 
There's no end out about it. Because guess what? God gonna keep tapping you. He gonna keep tapping you until you do what he has called for you to do. And you don't want to fall into the hands of mercy of our merciful God. You want to just do what he's called for you to do. Number three, your purpose is not just for you. It is always tied to someone else. So I want to let you know you on today. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you.
prayer request, special need for the Lord. 